The beauty of real estate is it gives you four ways to win. You don't just get that cash flow, you get your principal recapture. And these are on properties that we're renting. That is the mortgage pay down. So every single month, your mortgage gets paid down. And I learned this, it took me years to, feel, all this stuff took me five years to figure out. And like, yeah. I could have, <laughs> at year five, if I would have taken more courses near the beginning, I could have got to year five twice as wealthy, or I could have got there twice as fast. And so, you know, getting educated, that's why I always talk about it. I oriented my life around it. When you learn in those first few years, you accelerate your results exponentially because the first two years is where nothing, nothing really happens. And if you connect with people like you or me or anybody and educate yourself, that's where you shorten those first two years. And then that whole curve goes up. Uh, so that's the principal recapture I learned a few years in. Cause I was like, ah, my mortgage is like 1500 bucks. I'm pay- that's an expense. I'm paying 1500. And then like, it was a like year three of doing my tax return. I actually paid attention to what the account was doing. And I'm like, my mortgage is 1500. That's 18,000 a year. Why did you only write off, you know, 10,000? So, well, you're, that's, you're only 10,000 in expenses. The other 8,000 is yours. It goes in your pocket. It's your principal recapture. I'm like, what do you mean? And you explain, had to explain it to me, right? Cause no one taught me this is 21, 22 years old. Principal recapture. So that's number two, the tenant pays down your mortgage. And so you get that piece. Then number three is passive appreciation. So real estate, out of any investment you can have, real estate is the most, the safest investment when it comes to the investment appreciating. Sure, it will go up and down and up and down. It always will. Um, but let's face it, people, humans have two needs, food and shelter, right? I'll put food and water as one, shelter is the other. That is our basic needs. We need we our basic tangible needs, right? We need love and community and all those things. But as far as tangible needs, we need food and shelter. So get in the food business or the shelter business. Well, the shelter business is the barriers to entry a lot smaller than going to be a farmer and buying a thousand acres and, and $20 million of equipment. Um, and so get in the shelter business because it is the most secure business out there. And that's what we do as landlords, as investors, um, even as pre-construction investors, we're in the shelter business. And if we follow a couple of simple principles like population migration and the simple, couple of simple economics, My, um, Michael, then we're going to set ourselves Michael, up. For- I, I wanted to just expand a tiny bit uh, on the, the passive appreciation on housing. Uh, and what I want to expand on is because, again, like I know as a fact that we have a lot of savvy investors on this uh, call right now, but we also have a lot of new investors that haven't met us before and they're on YouTube or they're on Facebook and they're on Instagram. Passive appreciation on a leveraged asset. I just want to stick a a tiny segment in here. A home is worth $500,000. You buy that home using 20% down, which is $100,000. When that home goes up 3% or 4% or 5%, if you had taken that $100,000 and put into the stock market, and that went up at the same rate, 3% or 4% or 5%. On $100,000 in the stock market or in any monetary, other financial instrument for that matter, that's non-leveraged, you would have earned at 5%, $5,000, just to keep the math simple. Your $100,000 that went into real estate, you still put the same money in 100,000, the asset went up by 5%, the exact same as your stock. But in this case, you you had a return on $500,000, meaning five times five, it's an easy calculation, it's $25,000 in the exact same year, in the exact same market. One goes up 5%, the other one goes up 5%. What you give up in liquidity from uh, the money markets to be into real estate, you can't press a button and sell your home. It doesn't work that way. But it's, it's also not locked in for 10 years either. But it's not a liquid asset. You can't call it a liquid asset. What you give up in liquidity and the gain from leverage is just non-comparable. And this is the magic of real estate. And I want to expand on that because that's brilliant in in terms of why do we invest in things? Why do we put our money somewhere? We want to have something that makes the most amount of money with the least amount of risk, right? We want this delta, low risk, high return. That is like the holy grail of investing, Real estate does that better than anything else. So how do we reduce our risk? Well, we know it's one of the most basic needs so that if people, what what I was talking about earlier, we reduce risk because it's one of the most basic needs we have. If 
people have no money or there's an economic downturn like there is now, what's going to go first? The restaurants, the travel, the vac- like we are in a living case study of why real estate is the best investment on the planet. What goes first? All the other crap goes for the shoes, the movie nights, the extra stuff. What do people have to do? They have to buy food and go to the grocery store, get it delivered. We're living that. They have to pay their rent. And if they can't pay their rent, what does the government do? Gives them money to buy food and pay their rent. The government's not giving money right now in Canada, in the U.S., in any country on the planet to go to the movies and to go. They're saying, don't fucking do that stuff. Don't, you can't go. Oh, Everything's closed. Can't. Everything's closed. Yeah. Don't do that. What yeah. do we want you to do, human <laughs> civilization? Buy food and pay your rent. And so risk, this is the lowest amount of risk. And, you know, for, for people watching that say, well, my tenants might not pay and uh, real estate's risky right now. Compare it to anything else on the planet that you can invest in. And real estate is still the least risky thing right now that you can invest in because it is a basic need. So that's the risk side. On the, on the growth or wealth side, remember, we want to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. How do we make the most amount of money? Well, real estate has something that almost nothing has that's, that Simeon just talked about, which is what I call the leverage multiple. It's the leverage multiple in real estate. The leverage multiple goes like this. If you can put a portion of the total value down, whatever that portion is will be the multiple you will get in your return. So for example, if you put one fifth down on a property, you get five times the return, which is 20% down. If you put one tenth down on a property, you get 10%, 10 times, 10 times, not 10%, 10 times the return. So I know you guys were doing deals that people were putting 20% down or even 5% down on pre-construction and they went up like, they, they went up 15, 20% in value. And on a 10 times multiple, people were making 200% on their money invested. Because to me, the money invested is the deposit. It's the cash out of my That's pocket. Right. That's in economics, we call that opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost of putting a hundred, of buying a $500,000 property is only $100,000. That's the opportunity cost of buying that property. So if I put that in the, the stock market, not to repeat uh, Simeon's example, in the stock market, that makes me 5% and I get $5,000. In the real estate market, it makes me 5% on 500,000, I get 25,000. So I get a five times multiple. So I wanna make sure everyone wrote that down, understands leverage multiple. The fraction of the money you put in is the multiple you get back out. And real estate is virtually the only thing on the planet that can do this. Some stock portfolios allow you to do this in private investing. If you have over $10 million invested, you can leverage but, it. But uh, you're talking a whole us. different risk profile. The risk profile on future stock trading yeah. or, or anything, we can. it's not even in the same discussion. No, yeah. It cannot be in the same discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you there is about- options, but risk profile, astronomically different. There is a fourth way to win that I want you to go yes. back to as well, Michael. Okay, so that's passive investing, and that's why that's significant. Um, that's, that's just a couple of the reasons why that's significant, very significant. And then there's the fourth way to win in real estate. And this way is the what I call the control dial in your real estate, in your investing. No other investment, virtually no other investment on the planet gives you the type of control real estate gives you. What do I mean by that? In real estate, you could work harder and make more money or work less hard and make less money. You have full control. If for a couple of months, you want to just chill and do nothing, then you chill and do nothing. And your real estate's making you money with the three ways to win. If you want to really hammer hard, either in the first part of your career or maybe year 10 or year 30, whenever it is, you want to make more money, you execute this fourth way to win, which is active appreciation. And what that means to me is I can actively go into a property. I can actively choose to increase, improve the property, which will, which will increase the value because that's intrinsically how real estate works. Increase the value. Well, I should, I should put a caveat. If you do the right renovations in the right combinations. <laughs> yes, um, yes, yes. Right. But for the most part, it's hard to screw up unless you're putting yeah. in like a, a pool and a spa and a student rental. You're not really increasing the value. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it, this is kind of hard to screw up. But you, you, right. you you improve the property, you increase the value. So that does a couple of things. It explodes your wealth and it increases your cash flow. It allows you to refinance and then explode your portfolio. I, I mean explode because you could take one and buy two and then take two and buy three sometimes with these down payments as they explode. 
But the most important thing I think for people watching is the fact that this gives you control over your life. And I can't go to my stock portfolio and I have money in the stock market. I balance my portfolio through it, all different investments, venture capital, real estate, stock. I'm at a point where I do that. Um, but at the beginning, the first 10 years, eight years was only real estate. I didn't touch anything else because I couldn't go get a stock market portfolio and wake up one morning and say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to increase the value of that portfolio. No, whatever happens in the market happens. And I have no control. Real estate and the fourth way to win active appreciation gives you control on how much money you make and how hard you work. And I think that is the holy grail of everyone's lifestyle freedom is you get to choose how much money you make and how hard you work. What more do you want? 